<laughs> Thank you so much. We're going to be recording this session in Integrity. Each of you should have been given a, a little USB drive. And in that drive, you have access to our PowerPoint presentation, uh, the proposal that was submitted, as well as a few articles. Um, so we're going to be talking about addressing plagiarism in online settings, uh, strategies for promoting fair and honest student work. And so what are the overall objectives for this session? So um, basically, want to first recognize the misconceptions that we may have on why students plagiarize. So we're going to have this little Kahoot activity. So if you haven't logged into your browsers yet, please do so. You want to log into the computer, use Chrome. Um, uh, we also want to not only recognize misconceptions, but be able to provide guidance for our students uh, so that we can help them learn how to properly paraphrase and, and be, be able to identify the how not to plagiarize. Um, and by in order to do that, we've uh, Dr. Newman has created a soft talk lesson that goes over uh, information that students need to be familiar with so that they can avoid plagiarizing. And hopefully, we can reduce uh, the amount of plagiarism that takes place in our university setting. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and move to the Kahoot activity. And so what I'd like you to do is everyone in a Chrome browser. Yes? Is anyone not? Just let me know. Are we good? OK, cool. cool. So go ahead and uh, if, you're, uh, if you haven't gone so already, go ahead and type kahoot.it, kahoot.it. And I'm just going to go back and look. Yeah, good. Uh, so open up a browser. Use Chrome because we're having problems with, oh, thank you, uh, with uh, Internet Explorer. So you just have to go to kahoot.it. Why do you want to do this activity? Well, the winner gets an echo dot. So, <laughs> so <laughs> all right. So or I'm going to go ahead and get, get there myself. So if you're ready, uh, the ID to join is 173247. So it's 173247. So we have one person. We have two, three, Roland, an MD. Uh, we have Shaga, Claudia, Luz. How many participants do we have? Mark, Carl, Arlette, one, two, three, four, eight, nine, ten, awesome, great. So, you know, how many of you have used Kahoot before? Okay, how many of you have not? That's okay, because we're going to actually have a question that does not count for anything, but just to get you familiar with how to use it. So let's go ahead and press, I'm going to go ahead and press start. And so it's going to have four questions. The first question is not going to count, it's just simply to get you familiar. So you're pointed out just an empty question to get everyone familiar with responding to questions in Kahoot. Then the next screen you should get is some boxes. You will only get colored boxes, but on the screen here has the answers. So red is, phew, I needed this, I, or blue, I am familiar with Kahoot, yellow, I use this for my class, and green, game on. So you just basically choose the option that fits your answer choice. Does everyone see? And so I changed it to 30 seconds to give people time. Yay. So there's no really no right answer for this, but this tells us, OK, phew, I needed this. So four needed this activity to get them used to this. And then when I, once, once this is done, uh, the next screen, when I click next, it'll say who's on the lead. So basically, everyone's <laughs> Eddie's lead. No. no, there's nobody in the lead because it didn't count for any points. <laughs> so we get the idea? Are you ready to go? Ready. Great. Awesome. So the next question, most students plagiarize, not a question statement, intentionally. So you have 30 seconds. The way this goes about two, just so that you're aware, uh, it not only goes by who answered correctly, but also who answers the fastest. So that's how it ranks it. So even if you answered it correctly, you'll notice that's going to have different ranks. 
strengths. So now I'm ready to click on the next. So Rolando, yay! <laughs> He's on the lead right now. So we have three more questions less left. So it's true, plagiarism. It's uh, most studies show that it's inadvertent. Um, there's different reasons why students plagiarize. Some because they don't know how to properly paraphrase, or what constitutes uh, proper citation, um, or how much to properly cite. So there's things that we need to make our students aware of. So that or go ahead. If they make a mistake, it's gonna, it'll, it'll, I have no idea. <laughs> Maybe if you answer the fastest for the next yeah. few times, yeah. that's how you'll do it. So we get the idea that it's not in, not necessarily intentional for all cases. And we just think uh, it's, it's inadvertent. Next question, ready? Uh, well, on instructors, as instructors, one of our roles is to catch students in the act of plagiarism. So, it's not true. Uh, what our role is basically to provide. So, one of our roles is actually to educate our students so that they can be successful and not and learn what they need to do so that in order to not plagiarize. So, our role is not necessarily it's not to catch our students, but to help our students to provide resources so that they don't plagiarize. And I know I talked fast. <laughs> so, A can to Lee. Who's that? Oh, good job. So it's like Cantu, right? Yeah. Yes, okay. <laughs> Last question. Adding plagiarism checker tools are enough to deter students from plagiarizing. Oh wow, that's fast. All right. So it's false, right? Because of the fact if they don't know how to properly paraphrase or know how what, what it what's involved in plagiarism, then how can we expect a tool to solve the solution? And actually some for other studies what they've actually showed too is we actually see an increase in plagiarism. Uh, they call it cognitive load, like they get stressed out, like oh no, this is gonna and so you, you see an increase in plagiarism. So we wanna go over some proce a process or 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 ways in which we can help our students be successful in an online course, help educate our students and how not to plagiarize. And, but we also need to understand why they plagiarize as well, like un inadvertently. Why do they, wh what are the things they're getting confused in? That way we can help prepare them to avoid that. <laughs> so who's the winner? Anna So then we'll go back to our PowerPoint presentation. So before we actually begin our presentation, and I'm bad with this mic. Uh, before we begin with the presentation, we want to explain how we got to where we are at today. And so Dr. Newman's going to share the instructions. Okay. Interesting thing happened in October. We had a wonderful uh, luncheon for, with Colt and stuff, and. Uh, Three things we talked about. The second thing was academic integrity. The place erupted. Uh, it seemed like there were like 35 people there. It seemed like everybody was talking at the same time. Um, and what I came away with uh, as, a, as a faculty member from the Department of Writing and Language Studies, where we do address academic integrity significantly, is that uh, instructors are extremely frustrated and that they do seem to think as this person said, that students have learned not to use sources correctly. I was stunned when I heard that. That's the point when I, I raised my hand and I said, excuse me, it, it's kind of easy to do this. And then afterwards, uh, Nesk and I had a little conversation about starting to change the culture. And for me, uh, I'm an instructional designer. My role is uh, to help uh, support faculty in, in online learning. Um, we took a professional development, Jessica and I actually, was, uh, on, on the Online Learning Consortium, and they present a scorecard, and the scorecard actually shows an institution-wide evaluation of how to prepare our learners. One of the things, one of the criteria or resources that they recommend 
is, uh, well, two actually, right? One is for the students, is to provide resources for our students in every online course on uh, how to prop, uh, what plagiarism is and what, how, what proper, I guess, how do you say it, ways to not, citations. Ci proper citations and how, not to, how to avoid plagiarism. Uh, another thing is also that they recommend is to educate faculty in the, pro the reasons why students plagiarize and what can we do uh, t about it, changing the attitude of, and then it's not necessarily an attitude of everyone, that's not true, but just changing the scope of, uh, we're not here to catch our students plagiarizing, but we're here to help them to be successful in the online environment. And so that's where, when we were in the round table and this came up and Dr. Newman uh, mentioned it, it's inadvertent, and I'm like, yes, that's gonna be the person I'm gonna talk to <laughs> to help me. So I was looking for somebody to be a partner to so be able to provide this resources for our students, and we'll talk about what the goals are for this uh, this lesson and for what we're doing. And so what does the literature say? What are the things? So there's different ways that are be, uh, of plagiarism is being handled all across the world. So you know, we know that this is not something that's taking place just in the United States. So you have articles in New Zealand, the UK. And one of the things they recommend is we want to provide resources to help them educate our students on what plagiarism is, but also what the misconceptions, like where are they getting, like where, where are they misunderstanding of the concepts, and then let's educate them how to properly uh, cite sources, how to properly summarize, par uh, uh, paraphrase, and so on. And so, the, uh, so, so one of the articles, and there are several uh, practices, and this is what we're gonna be going through actually for ourselves. We also wanna provide opportunities for students to discuss. So for the online environment, we just don't wanna give a self-paced lesson and leave it alone as that. We wanna have a student-centered learning environment where they're engaged with each other, with the instructor, with the content as well. And so we wanna make sure to provide opportunities to discuss and, not, and for those that teach hybrid or face-to-face, -face, have these discussions in class as well. Um, and then we want to have opportunities to submit work so that they can get, uh, they can have their paper assessed, evaluate, get a feedback. And one of the nice things you can do too is you can use peer-to-peer -peer feedback as well. So we wanna provide those opportunities as well. And then check, what does check mean? So we also wanna provide an opportunity where you can use SafeAssign not to catch them, but for them to submit their, their papers so they can evaluate themselves like how they're doing and then they can make corrections. So it doesn't count against them, it's just a way for them to check their work themselves. Okay, so let's, um, this is the lesson that Jessica and I have created. Um, this, if you can see the page numbers, there's quite a few page numbers, it's a longer version. We have a very short version to show you today, just to give you an idea of um, what is available. We're hoping at the end of the day, somebody will say, a lot of you will say, those of you who are faculty members, could we have a copy of that to pilot in, in our classes? Um, so the, you just kind of scroll through, I'll scroll through the, the shorter table of contents, which is only about 10 pages long. Um, we try to keep very short amounts of information on, uh, on each page because those of you who are faculty members know that students sort of have an aversion to reading huge amounts of text on, on anything. So the first, um, the, the first page, I'm not getting, well, I'll just kind of go through it really fast um, and show you that we do have some definitions, basic definitions of plagiarism, uh, which you know basically is using stuff that does not belong to you uh, and failing to attribute it to the, the author. Um, we also wanted to make sure that they understood the term fair use and academic integrity. Um, and then the, the clear distinction between I didn't mean to do it, I don't know how to do it, and yes, I intended to copy. Um, most of them are not going to do that, but again, if you've been a faculty, if you're a faculty member, you probably have had situations where you get them to admit that, well, yes, I did copy. Um, um, so this, this so far has been the most uh, popular page. Uh, it was piloted, this has been piloted in my classes, four classes over the, uh, the fall, and my students were like, oh my God, I had no idea that when I did this, I was, uh, I was plagiarizing. Um, and so this, if, if you're a faculty member, you're probably not, and yeah, this has happened. They're submitting somebody else's work as their own. Um, it sounds like it's incredible, but their friend over there has a copy from last semester and it's so easy to get it. Doesn't happen very often, but it does happen. The published piece is your own. Again, it doesn't happen very often, but occasionally it does. Um, the internet side, it, it's so easy to do that. 
and and then getting someone else to do <laughs> work for you. This this one, I was walking down the covered walkway one time, and there are these couple of girls walking in front of me. They're having a conversation, and one girl's like, "Oh yeah, my boyfriend always asks me to do his homework. I do it." Um, you know, and it does happen. And then there's a uh, there's a uh, self checks all the way through. This one is um, something that uh, it just something that, that kids do. You know, they they read this terrific article on the same topic that they have an assignment. They kind of reword it, turn it in. They sound brilliant. It's plagiarism, but that does happen. And and then I've got another example. This one actually happened in my class PowerPoint presentation in a freshman class. And I thought, my goodness. These kids who are in high school, they sound absolutely brilliant. Look at these big words they know. It turned out they had found a copy of a similar presentation online and submitted it as their presentation, and they did get to the dean of sen they got sent to the dean of students' office. Mm -hmm. oh. Are you noticing that much That's a good one. We need to go back and add that. Thank you. I will. I will definitely add that. Wow. <laughs> good, good point. Um, and this is the part that that they actually. This was a page that was the really popular one. Um, how many of you have ever heard your students tell you, "I agree with everything my sources are saying," so it's kind of like my own words. Okay. Um, honestly, that's, I have had to say that. Um, okay. This is the bad part of uh, paraphrasing. Okay, well, somewhere in high school they said you just change some of the words and 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 it's, it's paraphrasing, and they forget to cite. Uh, uh, lots of summarizing. This I do think is a carryover from high school that that they don't have really good research uh, instruction, and so a research paper ends up being this kind of list of here's what I read in this in this article. Long summary, long summary, long summary. Um, and the quotation marks, this is another, it's, it's a small bit, it's a, it's a problem uh, where they just put something in and they don't put quotation marks. And then the one that my students really were shocked about discovering was cutting and pasting, that this has become the standard way for novice researchers to do research. This sounds good over here, it sounds good over here. Um, I'll just put in some transitional statements and, and voila, I have a paper. Um, well, it doesn't work that way. But the interesting thing is that this is 100% unintentional. And then we have little self-checks. Uh, uh, faculty and, and staff, you recognize the simplicity of the self-checks from like the, the compliance things we have to do, yeah, just to show that we understand and we're, we're here and paying attention. Um, and, and to keep the information fresh in front of them. And so uh, the, the module shows them three ways to, the three basic ways to integrate source material, the direct quotations, uh, summaries, and uh, summary of short amounts of information and paraphrasing. And we won't go through all of these, but there are pages for each one of these. There's a direct quotation explanation with everything that they could possibly misunderstand, a short example, and there's one for summary, um, and uh, faculty colleagues. Um, understand that when we're using the term summary, it doesn't mean here's an entire article and you're going to summarize it. It's, it's what we do when we, when we do research on our own. We find an article and we summarize it, you know, the, the gist of it in a single sentence and that becomes something really important and it allows us to move on to our research. And so that's what, how I'm uh, explaining. Or sometimes, you know, maybe a paragraph and they can summarize it in a, in a couple of sentences, a, a, a pivotal paragraph. And then, um, the paraphrasing, making sure they understand that it is not just about changing a word or two, but truly understanding that um, what the, par the passage is saying and truly putting it in their own words. There's an example, um, and then a couple of self-checks. This is a uh, matching where they've got several examples and they just do a matching. Uh, matching. And then just we don't mean to do it. Uh, here's here's some here's some ways to uh, to improve the situation. Okay, go back to the. Okay, and this this was a feedback that I got from students. Uh, different scenarios of plagiarism because they're we don't know what they are, and um, <laughs> this one's pretty funny. I'm not 
really sure. Maybe I learned it, but I don't really remember. And and you know you you know this that that yet you have your best intentions as a as a professor, and then you're kind of surprised when they re really didn't um, didn't know what was going on. Um, okay, so big question: Whose responsibility is it to make sure students? know the difference between intentional and unintentional plagiarism and just do the, the big thing. Yes, yes, yes. Everyone. Yes, oh good. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's a plant, yes, everybody's. Um, it, it seems to be, you know, everybody thinks, well, they took two required classes in, in, uh, in English and they've had, they've had English their entire high school career. They should know. <laughs> but the thing is that those of you who are in disciplines, who are discipline professors. Um, I don't want to put it like it's your responsibility, but your students do not understand how to converse in the discipline until you guide them. We can do only so much in writing and language studies. We need the, the assurance that the engineering professors, the kinesiology professors, the music professors, you know, on and on and on. We can't help your students learn how to write and talk in your discipline, but you can. So, oh, and this is uh, uh, Shanahan and Shanahan are big names in uh, disciplinary literacy. And um, they, they point out, it's not just about reading, because reading only takes you so far. Those higher level thinking, higher level critical thinking skills, they need the help of an expert who can guide them into the conversation of the discipline. And that's where, oh, yes, yes, yes. Passing the buck. And we can help, but we can't be the only one in the conversation. There needs to be other people involved as well. And not just the professor, but also the students. Yes. Yes, and the huge downside is uh, the discipline professors already have tons of stuff to do, and I totally get it, um, which is why um, maybe. I just wanted to chime in too, just that it also for graduate students does it stop in undergraduate. There, these research also need to be available for graduate students as well. Yes, and uh, and as we pointed out, safe assign is nowhere near enough. Um, Okay, so here's my, my suggestion. Um, and this, this does take a little bit of extra work from the discipline professor, but I try to create this very simple assignment. Um, so uh, I actually did a PowerPoint, a very, very short PowerPoint, and reminding the students what the, the four basic ways of integrating source material, summarizing, paraphrasing, direct quotation, combo. Um, so here's my challenge to my colleagues. Um, to teach your students how to how to not plagiarize. <laughs> what, what you might do is take an article that you've written, a chapter that you've written, either have them read the whole thing, or if you, they choose not to read it, then you can just show them the example. And uh, if that doesn't work, then just pick an extra from an accessible article in the discipline, something that is now way beyond their uh, their their cognitive level at this point. So I took uh, I took an article that I wrote in. Uh, So I've got them color coded. The blue one is an example of summary. So that's the summary of the entire article. And, there are, and this is also showing them how to use what are called signal words and tags and citations, short little paragraph, 80 words. In their article on history English collaboration, Newman and Rosa's 2016, rely on a variety of cross disciplinary activities to promote critical reading and powerful writing. Paraphrase. They created a unit on based on documents that address slavery controversies in America just before the Civil War. Quotation. The culminating writing activity affirmed that students didn't just learn history facts and formulate writing strategies, but instead explored diverse perspectives and investigated logical and historical context. What I was trying to do is move beyond the, the just dry, don't understand what I'm really writing, but I'm using a paraphrase, a summary, or a direct quotation, and, and showing how to integrate. It is possibly not likely that your students would ever write a paragraph like this based on a single piece, but it's just to show, to show what um, you could possibly do. Um, and so the, the assignment that we're going to show you in just a minute, it's like two lines. It says, you know, just, just write a one paragraph application that integrates each one of these. And then we have a rubric that uh, professors can use, very simple, the, the kind that is available in Blackboard and which I personally hate to use because, because I, don't, I don't like to give scores for individual categories, uh, but it's there. 
So let's let's look at the example. And um, colleagues in other disciplines, if, if you're interested in, in using this, so this is the this is the assignment. Um, um, write a sh and this is this is after you have given them either a copy of something you've written or uh, an excerpt. Um, okay. Have, no, go ahead. And then, um, have, have you had a chance to just kind of skim through it? Okay. Can can you leave it up there for like 30 seconds so they can read it? There, read whatever article you provided. It would ideally be attached here uh, or excerpt. Uh, construct a coherent paragraph that includes at least one sentence that summarizes, one sentence that paraphrases, and one sentence that includes a direct quote. Uh, the citation, whatever citation format you're using, and um, you've already provided them a sample that you wrote, and uh, very short. They like doing short stuff. Alternatively, you could have them submit this in a discussion board. My students always think discussion board means not too much work, okay? So um, can you show them the rubric? Uh, how many of you have done rubrics? Okay, how many of you do not like doing rubrics? <laughs> okay, um, it's, it's one of those QM things that we're supposed to do, but they are such a pain to do. And um, so I've got, I've got them set up here. And, and if you've never done a rubric, then this is to, to help you see the difference between, you know, how to differentiate between the top level and then the increasingly lower level. And I kept the, the terms that are used in Blackboard uh, b because everybody's familiar with them. And so when we, we want, the, obviously, the kids to all get in the top category. And notice only 12 points. So that also reduces the anxiety that the student uh, experiences. Um, and the zero is only if that particular zero for each category is only if they fail to do it. Because if they attempted it, even not at such a good, uh, in such a good way, then, um, then, then at least they're getting credit for doing it. I have never used that, but I, I'm really interested in um, doing it. Okay. Yeah. So can we, yeah, can we go back to the to the assignment? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, not to the assignment, to the to the slide that has the assignment on it. Yeah, right there. Okay. So does this sound like something that might be doable? faculty uh, members. I know it's, it takes a little bit of uh, additional time, but this is not something that can actually be integrated into uh, a self-check. But this would be for faculty members who might be interested in taking a little bit of extra time to, uh, to actually get the kids to understand how to talk and write about the, the discipline. you get to ask more questions. Is nine five three three four eight two. That's the the game pen. Nine five three three four eight two. questions. <laughs> so what we're curious about finding out is how many of you would, would likely 
want to be participate because the goal would be to pilot this so that eventually this lesson will actually be found in every, well, eventually on, online course. And it's an option not forcing anyone to use it, but right now pilot it so that we can do whatever we need to do to make improvements and or apply it differently. So totally, eight, five, I've learned so much today, but let me think about it. And one, no one said I'm still not convinced. That's great. <laughs> And the nice thing about soft chalk too, so if you're interested in using it, is you can contact us and we can then we can add you to the soft chalk lesson. If you want to change it too, so if your discipline is only on APA citation, then you can remove the items that talk about MLA Chicago and just focus it on on that as well. And I said that. Um, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. going to ask just simply like for those of you that are interested in piloting if you can just give us your contact information so that we can contact you uh, we'd really appreciate it after the session okay do I move to the next question, next question. Sure. I might have done some something accidentally because I, <laughs> I was changing things last night so I'm kind of worried about the next question so <laughs> no one won I have questions to okay so I have a question about this. this is an opportunity for you to ask questions how do I start lessons learned So how do I start? You can start by contacting us through email. If you sign up here, we can go ahead and then um, contact you. And we'll begin the process of getting this going as far as how we go about piloting, how we can implement other strategies to uh, incorporate discussions. If you're teaching a fully online course and you want to, like, how do I discuss? How do I get them going? So we can discuss ways about doing that. And we can also discuss ways about how to check. So the self and peer review, we can help you set up, set that up. Um, the assignment tool as well, the one that Dr. Newman had. So things to consider. And then lessons learned. Yeah, we, we'd like to hear some questions and feedback. I mean, once again, thank you so much for sharing that one day. Yes. Uh, yes. I just wanted to share something from the uh, Native Chicago Library Association. Uh, they
Thank you. Um, this also reminds me of uh, a concept about learning about pedagogy. Um, something that you might think of is just in my learning. Students don't learn something until they already can learn it. So the, the environment is such, the, the dynamics are such that, yes, they may have learned about citations and documentation and fair use of academic materials in 1301 and 1302, but it's not until they get into the upper dimension of discipline courses that they are ready to What's the end game? Because going off with what Rolando said, because one of the end games we have is where there's a there's a there's a course, and if the students are asked for a basic discipline to okay take certain modules, the goal was to soft talk they would be able to print out a certificate and download it, and they can then, like, if their fa faculty ask them so to verify, have they taken this this course? Oh, 10 minutes, yay! <laughs> then they can actually then ta uh, upload it to that that assignment Dropbox and show that yes, I've taken this course. But it's something that's accessible to everybody at any time. So that's something that we're looking at too as a possibility in the future.
every whatever department you're in, you have an assigned instructional designer too. So if you're trying to see like different ways to incorporate as far as using the tools, we're here for you too. The technical um, stuff, yes. <laughs> Sure, no, that's fine, that's fine. Go for it. 